All righty. First breakdown of the 2024 season that I will be doing is of Oregon. I chose five plays from the 2023 offense, kind of just to give you guys an idea of what they're going to be running this year. Obviously, it's a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit different of an offense. We got Bo Nix, uh, Troy Franklin, and Brooks all left for the NFL. Obviously, brought in Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma. and um, But still got Will Stein as the OC. So I'm just going to show you a few of the core concepts with shifts and motions, kind of against different fronts, different defenses, defensive uh, coverages. And, yeah, let's get this party started. So first play we see, it's against uh, Penn State. They're going to be running in – looks well, looks like an over front initially, too high, two high safeties. And they're going to shift from three by one, like spread out wide of the field. They're going to shift to a bunch on the line of scrimmage. And what that does kind of – uh, it, what's the word I'm looking for? It can just kind of constricts the offense, condenses the formation is what is, that's the word I was looking for. So the first play we're going to see, it's going to be GH counter. And what we're going to see is he's going to block down. He's going to take the mic. He's going to kind of, he's going to take him. He's going to take him. He's going to sift the defensive end. We're going to see the guard pull, kick out the defensive end. He's going to come take the plus one or in this formation, the will. And which that leaves, he's gonna, if he blocks him, they kind of go here. It takes makes these guys responsible for these two players. Which anytime you have that in a matchup, it's that's good because see they got to come down fill their gaps. And what we're gonna see here is when they run the counter play, he's gonna end up breaking a tackle. It ends up being a pretty big gain, safe to say. So, boom, he goes in. Good block from both the guard and the Y and boom breaks a tackle and a long touchdown just to kick off their run of <laughs> their reign of terror over Penn State that game because that uh, Oregon's offense was on full display against Penn State last season so but yeah so GH counter is a staple of that o Oregon's offense it's something Will Stein likes to call a lot they called it a lot last year I think it was actually the highest called concept of all their runs that they ran last year but on to the next play second play of the game is third or not second play of the game second play that i'm going to be showing you guys it's third and two against washington fourth quarter we got three minutes left and gotta get a first down here gotta get a first down you're playing a really good offense Penix, who's now atlanta falcons i guess backup quarterback that that's a whole thing but what we are going to see here is they're going to shift from like a double left stack Y is going to shift over to the other side. Running back's going to flip as well. And what we're going to see right here is an exit motion from the Y. So he, you can see, this guy kind of has inside leverage on him, which with the concept that they run here is what they want. They're going to run a snag concept, which we got a snag concept, is going to be, boom, he is going to run a corner. He's going to run like a, a snag or a sit, and he's going to run a flat. And what with the leverage that you have here, Nix rolls out, boom, takes the flat, first down, huge first down that Oregon desperately needed in that situation. So just a great example of using motion, using motion to create leverage, to create a matchup that you want in a position where you kind of dictate what the defense does. And all right, so play three, play three, we're going to go, got two by two spread out wide, running back to the right side of the formation. And we're going to see single high. What well, looks like they're pressed, the corners are pressing, which press is an early indicator of man. What you see is corner takes a kind of look at his eyes, takes a quick peek at they're looking at the quarterback, which obviously corners aren't the best thing to look at when identifying defensive coverage. But a lot of times in man coverage, they're going to look at their receiver, they look at the quarterback. That's an early indicator of his own. And but what's the dead giveaway? is we're going to see the receiver come in motion and they're going to bump everything over to the other side of the formation, which which uh, to explain kind of what I mean by bump is we're going to see these guys shift over, which means the zones shift over, responsibilities switch. And instead of man where this guy would have, you probably would have seen him follow or him kind of go up and him come down depending on the way the defense works. So what we're going to see here is kind of a four verts concept. You're going to see, uh, the wide receiver in the backside is going to run vertical. 
He's going to run outside release. He's going to run a bender. The motion man is just going to kind of run to the flat. He's going to run the seam or, depending on the offense, seam read. And, yes, yeah, so we got four verts. Bo Nix decides to take the one-on-one -on, -one on the backside with uh, the receiver, beats him deep, touchdown. So what we end up seeing is cover three. Um, and if you have time to throw and if you have a quarterback that knows how to read the field, four verts is a staple for basically every offense, but it was especially made popular in air raid offenses. That I know, and this is talking about air raid, another air raid concept, <laughs> another air raid concept that we see common is mesh. And what we're going to see here is just going to end up being a mesh rail. We're going to see an orbit motion from the two receiver on the front side. And what looks like initially single high, you got the corners pressing. Once again, kind of the same look that you saw there. Uh, we got the field safety kind of working way over there. And uh, so we're going to see, we're going to see the number two motion over is going to orbit motion. And what we are going to get here is kind of the responsibilities are switching. It looks kind of confused, but they pick it up. Mesh comes wide open. Oh, uh, let me quickly explain what mesh rail is going to be for you guys. So what we're going to see here, mesh rail, you basically you got two crossers. Let's use the inside receiver. He's two going to cross. He's going to run a clear out. He's just going to run the rail on the orbit. He's going to run over the ball. So usually what you want to do is you got to read. Want to read. Uh, this guy's going to be a check down. Depending on how you run the offense, you're going to see sometimes rail is the first read. Sometimes you go triangle read here. Boom, boom. Rails alert. The other guy is coming backside. That's the check down. And uh, what we see here is the check down is open. No one covers the guy. And another almost walk in touchdown with the Oregon Ducks. And then we got one final play. This is going to be outside zone, which is another one of their core concepts. And what we're going to see is going to be two by two. He's in the hip of the left tackle. He's getting close, kind of in a stack. And what we're going to see here is just outside zone, but it's an RPO. You got this guy up ahead, this guy coming across, kind of on an arrow, a slip, whatever you want to call it. You got outside zone blocking here. Quarterback's reading this guy. If he breaks down, he comes down, He's he can pull it, and he's going to have this guy coming ahead. And this guy, you see, breaks towards the – once the handoff's completed, he does that. But uh, like the arrow was available if he wants it. I like adding RPO tags to runs. This gives the quarterback another option, keeps the defense honest. And if you got a guy that's crashing down like that, you can pull it and boom, go. But yeah, so those are five of the main concepts, five of the main uh, plays that Oregon ran last year. Obviously, you're going to see it out of different formations. You're going to see it with and without motion, but those are five of the staples of that Oregon offense and yeah so thank you for watching if you have any questions if you have any teams you want to see any concepts you want me to further break down because I tried not to take too much of your time up but any questions leave below in the comments um follow me on twitter I'll leave that linked below and I believe I already have that but yeah so I enjoy doing these I'm gonna try to get more of these out and uh Obviously, as the college football season rolls around, fire up chips.